Big thanks to Pineapple Guy Carmine who helped out with the research for Captain America. I can't wrap my head around Marvel and DC Comics, so without him, I would have likely been spreading false information about the Cap. Thank again, thank you Carmine, and to everyone else, enjoy the video! Welcome, debaters and viewers alike, to Two Ends. Here, I analyze two or more characters and decide who will win in a fight according to the information I've been given. This show isn't just me, however. After sticking to the end of the episode, you as viewers can predict who you believe will win in the next fight in a comment or video prediction. Your comment or video prediction may be featured in the next episode, so what is there to lose? Now, with all that said, let's see what we have battling today. Today we have Captain Canuck, Canada's crime-fighting hero, facing off against Captain America, America's super soldier. These two captains represent two neighboring countries with a great rivalry protecting their country from evils of all shapes and sizes. But if these two patriotic boys were to take things back to 1812, who'd take home the win? Let's analyze. Thomas Evans wasn't always a hero. Well, a superhero at least. He was a CISO officer, basically someone who keeps an eye on international safety or something. Anyway, Thomas was on a camping trip with a small group of scouts until one night they mysteriously vanished. Tom set out to find these scouts and discovered they were being mind controlled by aliens. Tom dived in to try and save these scouts from the aliens until he was shot by a mysterious alien ray and he woke up in the campsite with the scouts in the morning like nothing ever happened. Soon, Tom found out that his strength, speed, and endurance had doubled from this experience. He even gained a photographic memory that was so strong it was on par with today's computers. The CISO was surprised at the sudden burst of power from Tom and he became part of a new global anti-terrorist initiative. You know, like cool people. Tom Evans had officially become Captain Canuck. As a hero, Captain Canuck has faced quite a few villains in his time. Captain Canuck has taken down Mr. Gold, who enhanced his body with the use of technology. Captain Canuck has also helped in fighting off a global alien invasion. But of course, none of this compares to how Captain Canuck beat Criterion. Criterion threw a wheel so hard that it broke a spaceship's wing. He then proceeded to tear the ship apart with his bare hands, and then he survived the ship crashing, which caused an explosion that leveled a small town. Canuck was caught in the same blast and was able to hurt Criterion, who survived this crash. As for speed, Captain Canuck has been shown to consistently be able to dodge bullets and lasers. Captain Canuck has also been shown to be able to catch up to speeding vehicles. When someone pushed the pedal to the metal and tried to get away from Canuck, Canuck on foot ran and caught up to the speeding truck. We can't assume that this vehicle was going at its max speed, but it is still impressive nonetheless. In terms of durability, Captain Canuck has survived having so much electricity entering him that it brightened the entire room. Canuck has also jumped off the roof of the parliament building without so much as a little bit of pain. All this, and as I mentioned before, him taking an explosion that leveled a small town shows that he is quite durable when it comes to taking hits. Of course, any hero wouldn't be anything without an extensive list of weapons and abilities at their disposal. For abilities, Captain Canuck has photographic memory, superhuman strength, and superhuman speed. All of these earned when the Zeta rays hit him. Now for the true part of Captain Canuck's utility, his arsenal. Captain Canuck has a special suit and mask that allows him to do his crime fighting without issue. We'll start with his weapons. Canuck has two Tomfets that he keeps at his sides. They're his go-to weapon for close range combat, but when push comes to shove, Canuck will combine the Tomfets into a bow staff. This combined with the palms of a suit being able to shoot small bursts of energy allows Canuck to do well in close combat. If the fight comes to long range, Canuck has two stun guns on his back that he can pull out. These two guns can temporarily paralyze a foe, making it easy for him to approach and take them into custody. As for the main suit, Canuck's helmet has a visor that can scan through walls and identify any given target. The suit also has a mechanism that electrocutes people who try to remove it from his head. His helmet also allows him to communicate with Redcoat. Redcoat can see what Captain Canuck sees through her carrier and give Canuck much needed tactical advice, along with getaways and backup. The suit also comes with two wristbands which can cancel out electric shocks. The suit also comes with boosters which allow for hovering, softening landings, and flying. Despite all these, Canuck still has his flaws. Canuck's suit can easily be overloaded with electricity if enough is sent in. Canuck also struggles without Redcoat advising him. He also occasionally acts out of line for what Redcoat says to do, and he doesn't stop talking. Besides all that, Canuck is still a great hero for us Canadians, and he'll be there when duty calls. Hey. Oh, I'm sorry, did I interrupt something? Get 
Now, what is the most American thing you can think of? Okay. Now take that and multiply it by fighting Nazis and wearing the American flag. That is Steve Rogers. Honestly, I don't think I need to explain much about this lad, as I don't think there is anyone who has any interest in verses who doesn't know who Captain America is, especially since the cinematic universe became a thing. So honestly, I just want to get to what the Captain can do. Wait, you want to hear me talk about his backstory? I mean, but I won't be using any books for that, I'm just going to try and explain off the top of my head. Alright, so from what I remember, Cap uh, Steve Rogers was like this weak boy in like World War II that really wanted to join the army, but he was a weak boy, so no one really wanted him. So, uh, but eventually he got himself into the army, and uh, during a training session from what I remember, they, uh, they did a test grenade, like they threw it in. Uh, to see what all the soldiers would do, and Steve Rogers, because he knew he was a weak lad and pretty much useless to the rest of the army, he dived in and like covered the grenade or something, and uh, that made him the test subject for the super soldier experiment, which basically just made him super buff, and he fought the Nazis. Punch him on the face, hit him with a shield, shot them. Absolute unit. I think that's about it. He was also frozen for like years and then woke up in modern day when like... I don't know, he was found and then they thought him out. Pretty cool. Anyways, you call that? Good. I'm not going over it again, now please allow me to discuss Captain America's feats. Starting off with strength. Captain America is capable of fighting on par with the likes of Deadpool, one of the many street levelers in the Marvel Universe. In a calculation done by Aiden Brooks 999, Deadpool was hit by an asteroid that was calculated to have a force of 173 tons of TNT. In the same post, he calculated an explosion that Deadpool was hit by, and that came out as 117 tons of TNT. Both of which makes Captain America multi city block by scaling to the Assassin. For speed, Captain America can keep up with Black Panther and Spider-Man, both of which have microsecond feats. The Black Panther calculation was done by Assault Waffle on Versus Battles Wiki, where Black Panther dodges a glider thrown at him by the Hulk. This is calculated to come out as a little over Mach 6000. As for the Spider-Man feat, which was calculated by Huesto88, who is also from Versus Battles Wiki, where he do destroys a stone slab. This was calculated to be a little over Mach 7000. The fact that the uh, American captain could keep up with these two just makes him super impressive. For durability, guess what I'm gonna do? Scale! Whoopee! <laughs> guess who he scales to? Deadpool! Yay! Anyways, Captain America's AP skills was durability, in this case, which, uh, yeah, he's, he's able to damage Deadpool with his physical strikes. Which, uh, and since uh, he can tank that much damage with Newton's Third Law because he hits that hard, you get the deal. This all just means Captain America can survive attacks that are multi seed block level. Now for Arsenal. As an Arsenal, I mean Captain America's shield because that's basically all he has. Anyways, this is what makes Captain America super strong. Captain America can use his shield to block attacks, help hold up parts of broken buildings, and he can throw it as a projectile. The shield isn't sharp, but it is really, really good at bonking people on the head. In fact, guess how good it is at bonking people on the head? Like, as I said, really good, but like, what level is that? Like, since the shield is made of animantium, it has its own AP and durability stats. Separate from the captain, well, like, our good old captain. Guess what these stats entail? More scaling! Boy, do I sure do love scaling. <sighs> Anyway, simple enough, Captain America's shield is capable of taking hits from the Hulk, and is able to take down the Hulk with how hard it is, and how hard Captain America is capable of throwing this thing. Like, seriously, the amount of people that have been bunked to death comboed by the freaking shield is nuts. Anyway, uh, it, it makes the shield, like, planet level by scaling to the Hulk, who has been bunked by the shield, like, a lot. Even with all this, Captain America has one major flaw to capitalize on. His reliance on the shield. If you were to somehow keep him away from his shield, all his planet busting attacks would be taken from him, and you'd just be fighting a massively hypersonic multi city block buster. Not that it'd be easy, which is why no one should underestimate this soldier sporting the red and blue. 
But can this super soldier take down the Canadian hero? Let's take a look at your predictions while I magic up some results. Hey Cap, how do we know the good guys from the bad guys? If they're shooting at you, they're bad. What's up guys, SuperMew9001 here, and today we're doing a prediction on Captain America versus Captain Canuck. Ca I would say Captain America would win, as he's American. Bye. In all seriousness, I think Captain America would win, as Captain Canuck only really fought one person that's really super powerful. And, well, Captain Canuck almost died. If it wasn't for a helicopter saving him. So have fun with that. Um, also, while Captain Canuck can knock out a person on one kick, which is pretty cool, I guess, I'm pretty sure Captain America could do better. I mean, he fought people like Black Panther and Hulk. I think he should do better than what Captain Canuck can show. So, overall, I think Captain America should win this fight, and peace. Alright, let's see here. The winner is Captain America. History lied to me. The War of 1812 should have been enough for this fight. Whatever, allow me to explain why on earth Captain America takes the win here. First, let's look at this fight in the void without Arsenal. If we were to compare, Captain America has multi-seated block stats and massively hypersonic speeds, while Captain Canuck has town stats and subsonic speeds. From this, we can calculate Captain America can't exactly hurt Canuck, however, he does blitz him. If we were to view this fight with just these alone, Captain Canuck would take the win as it requires him to hit America once to take him out and America doesn't have the power to take down Can Canuck. And listen, I'd be all for this win. I truly would. I'm a Canadian myself, so I want Canuck to win, but when we include Arsenal, this fight is a completely different story. Even though Canuck has the Arsenal advantage by just having more stuff he has at his disposal, America has a shield. Which, it makes me very, very upset since it's made of adamantium. Due to Cap's shield being made of this stuff, it scales to feats that adamantium has achieved. It just changes Captain America's effective attack potency and just combines it with the speed. Since his speed is fast, it also changes his effective durability because so you can just bring it up just real quick. As I stated earlier in the video, Captain America's shield is capable of blocking strikes from the Hulk, who's a planet buster. And by taking that into account, Captain America is effectively a planet buster with massively hypersonic speeds thanks to the shield. With this in mind, scaling the uh, captain to our good old Canadian hero is like scaling a dude in a car to an ant whooper. To think of a real life example. It was a marvel how I thought Canucks stood a chance, but I'm gonna have to concede here. The winner is Captain America. Nothing but a pale imitation. Crash Bandicoot's such a crazy and unique character. Like, just super wacky. But if only I had someone to fight him, I, I really want to use him. I need someone just as wacky. Maybe someone with long limbs. But who? Who? Wait. <laughs> 